Hello everybody, this is Nick Gersio over at TAB, soon to be GeoBab, and welcome to Out of Home Office Hours. Uh, today we're going to be talking about demographic information in the current rating system and some of the research that went into finding that demographic information. A bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, we will have time for questions at the end, so please enter those in your GoToWebinar questions box. Um, also, these webinars are recorded and available by request. They are currently available to members only, so um, I do have unlisted links of these, so please email those to me. Uh, my new email address over here, even though my old one still does work, is nick, N-I-C-K, at geopath.org. Um, I will show that email at the end of this presentation. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it and, and talk a little bit about the research program in general. Uh, TAB at Home Ratings, um, originally Eyes On, um, were designed from the beginning to meet several specifications set by industry advertisers, agencies, and media companies. So these were things that were required of the rating system as we developed um, what would become TAB at Home Ratings. And these are things that were required to take um, our measurement from DEC into a usable um, rating system. Scope, granularity, um, geographic sensitivity, um, and expandability. Uh, these, are, these are just qualities of a good, um, re, uh, any sort of good uh, ratings system in general. Uh, the scope of this uh, research program obviously had to apply to um, all of our inventory that was in our, rating, in our um, uh, auditing database, as well as you know, the ability to expand to um, new members, new types of inventory, et cetera. Um, granularity, these, these ratings had to be available for individual level um, uh, of inventory available. The geographic sensitivity um, had to do with the um, ability to account for um, the different um, travel patterns of different people in different markets all across the country. Um, and the expandability had to do with the uh, ability to um, uh, be able to uh, be easily expanded um, into different formats, um, not just formats though, or just new inventory, also the ability to update and expand the current feature set. Now the ones I haven't mentioned here are demographics and commercial audience. These were things that were brand new. I, I say brand new, all of these were, were brand new, obviously having a re research program um, and an actual rating system of that, you know, of our immense scope and the um, extreme granularity that we have are new, but these things, these, uh, these other words also apply to how we went about uh, measuring circulation information. You know, the way that we measure a, a circulation information even now, or what we call the DEC then, is the same in Seattle as it is in, um, you know, Miami. So these, um, the, the standardization and the scope and granularity um, and geographic sensitivity were there in their own ways um, with just circulation. But demographics and commercial audience were completely new concepts for us. The way we used to handle um, demographics um, as an industry was really a, a judgment call by, you know, on, usually on the um, plant side, usually on the vendor side, but sometimes at a um, out-of-home specialist agency as well which is just a, um, an off-the-cuff sort of uh, decision about which inventory would be good for which type of demographics. And sometimes, not always, but you know, sometimes that relied on a, an observation about what the demographics of the neighborhood that that particular panel or unit would be located in. And that has a lot of problems. Um, there are, or I'm sure that if you're a vendor, um, or even if you're not, you could probably think of many different pieces of inventory, oftentimes on interstates or highways, um, that uh, audience doesn't really match the uh, neighborhood that it's in. So we've, we've talked about um, commercial audience, um, and by commercial audience there, I, I mean specifically 
the uh, ability to actually um, account for people viewing advertisers uh, advertising rather than simply having an opportunity to see the advertising. Um, but today we're going to be talking about demographics and just how we got about uh, you know came about actually incorporating real demographic information into our rating system. Um, demographics not based on, as I was saying, a judgment call by a sales manager or a GM or a, somebody at a, um, at a specialist agency. Now, before I go too far with that statement, I would like to say that there are observations and insights about inventory that people who operate that inventory, people who regularly buy and, and put together uh, packages and plans know about that inventory. Things like this is across from this stadium, this is, this is near um, this part of town. Those types of observations are very useful and valuable for our, our um, industry, but they're not the same observations um, that we make when we do a, uh, a detailed study of the demographics of people passing. So I, I don't want to say, in other words, I don't want to say there's no, uh, there's no value to um, having an intimate detail of different types of inventory in a market. What I am saying is that getting to demographics such as the ones that are available in our rating system like uh, um, age, race, ethnicity, household income, um, and et cetera, and all the combinations thereof, those things need to, to come from a, a real research program. So we start basically in, in, in the research program for TAB out of home ratings with our circulation counts. That's the base that we're building on. It's one of the things that allows us to have such sort of scope and granularity and, and universality or, or standardization of ratings, which is that we're starting with a measure that we've perfected, you know, since basically 1933, since basically we started, um, uh, this organization began. Um, that is an important number to build from. It also allows us to um, have a better sense of things like demographics, reach and frequency, et cetera, because it's, a, it's an important point of information, uh, just having sheer volume on, on roads. It's a, it's a, but it's a starting point. It's not the end point. I think that's the point I'm making here. Um, and measuring an audience is not the same thing as measuring a volume of, of people passing on segments of road, which is what the measure of circulation was, or DEC was. So um, that visibility research we've, we've talked about in another um, out-of-home office hours, very important. Um, but the next step here is, is actual demographics. And as I said, this isn't as easy as a lot of other types of media. Um, that can sort of extrapolate for, based on, on survey research. There's a lot of surveys that went into our demographics. But ultimately, um, the big thing here, and I think that, you know, obviously this is a, this is a ratings 101 uh, webinar. This is, this is sort of back to basics. There's going to be some stuff here that you guys already know. But the big thing I think that everyone should be walking around with and everybody should be very, you know, aware of is that we're ultimately measuring um, trip paths and generating trips um, and the demographics of those trips to get it to get our at our demographic um, information not simply uh, the demographics of, of neighborhoods that that panels are, are based on so that's that's really what the crux of the whole measuring demographics and out of home is, is all about which is what are the demographics of the people making trips that interact um, with certain sites of, of uh, out-of-home inventory, um, it, it's not as simple as, 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 as the neighborhood. So as I said, with circulation counts alone, we knew how many people had an opportunity to see a given uh, panel out-of-home uh, out panel in America, but we didn't know who they were. So we needed detailed information on the origins and destinations of Americans' weekly trips and the characteristics of the people making them. So um, that's where our demographic study came in. And there was a lot of different um, sources of this. We have a huge, huge amount of information that comes from U.S. Census and other government travel surveys. Um, and this gave us the bulk of the data. And this data is not only vast, and there's a lot of it, and then there's a lot of detailed information in it. It also can be drilled down to very small areas 
um, called census block groups. And so this is also very granular as well. We also conducted our, our own travel surveys. This was something that we were very proud of. Um, uh, we, we conducted 50,000 of our own um, travel survey, surveys of, of various kinds. But this, these travel surveys were used to add to the, uh, the information in the census, to help correlate information in the census, um, to uh, give us different types of insights that, that, were, that were available, and as a, and as a you know, uh, data points to cross-check and correlate um, um, information. It's not the bulk of the data um, of the R demographic uh, study here. So ultimately, to create um, our, our demographic information, we need to know how people are moving through a market. And to know that, I think, you know, to put it basically here, you can see a little, um, a little graphic here that shows, you know, a, 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 you know an origin location and different types of areas that this, um, the people in this origin travel to and the frequency of those trips. But basically we, we need to know our work and non-work type trip destinations um, and we need to know the frequency of those things. And then we, we use a model, um, a, a model based on um, virtual trips that we generate, very similar to how if you needed to get from where you are now to the closest Whole Foods, you would put that into a Google Maps or um, some other mapping uh, software and click uh, generate path and it would generate a path for you. Very similar to that is, is, is how all of these virtual trips were generated. So this is a just one very simplified example of, of this. We could go ahead and take a look just at you know this block groups trips to to work works once once again these these this is a very simplified example actual block groups have hundreds of areas in which their residents work eat shop visit professionals entertain themselves go to school etc but we are using these uh, trip path press to get a breakdown of people traveling past different uh, panels so uh, in other words when you have all of these trips on, on top laid on top of each other if you zoom in on any particular um, road segment of interest, you could get a demographic snapshot of the types of, uh, uh, of, P of demographics using that segment of, uh, of road. So that's the, that's the type of information. We're starting with a gigantic database of information, um, the census. This is, this is millions and millions of, uh, of, of uh, respondents in the census. Um, one in ten Americans uh, filled out the census. Um, you're adding even more to it, I mean, just to give you an idea of the scope here, I, you know, there's about 20,000 households that are involved with um, uh, all of Nielsen's uh, television ratings, and that's a perfectly, you know, valid number. There's nothing against that number, um, but that that the information of the demographics viewing program, the type of programs being viewed, that's all extrapolated based on that number of, of, of households. We had more than double that just of our own um, travel sur uh, surveys, um, and that ended up being just a small um, addendum and, and, and additional piece of uh, data and, and set of data points that allowed us to produce an even bigger database of all of these virtual trips. So we're talking about a, a you know a very large um, amount of information that needs to be um, that needs to be used and used um, intelligently in order to generate these types of trips in order for us to actually have a good idea of people, uh, the demographics of people passing out of home advertising. And, 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 you know, if you look at it like that, you can kind of understand why it took us so long as an industry to get here. Um, if it was always the case that we just had to do a little bit of, re a little bit of survey research, then, okay, we'll just apply that to everybody. Um, and bada boom, we're done, then I, I, I think this would have all happened um, much sooner. But this was actually, you know, obviously a lot of, a lot of work and, and time, and this is, and this is always um, being updated um, as well. Uh, we, um, we ultimately, with this um, research program 
and with the demographics added data, I mean, sorry, data added, uh, we have demographic, dem dem uh, demographic information available for all of our inventory. And, and in fact, all, the only um, piece of information that doesn't have uh, doesn't have demographic uh, information act absolutely cooked into it would just be your standard 18 plus um, impressions and things like that. You you can basically get demographics for every uh, piece of inventory um, demographics on the lines of, of TRPs, what we call target rating points. We have composition information available, meaning the percentage of people that match that demographic, uh, I'm sorry, percentage of impressions to a given panel or set of panels that match that demographic is available. Um, we have uh, demographics for all of our reach and frequency information. So basically all of the, uh, the data available, because um, now that I think about it, 18 plus is its own demographic. It's just a very, it's, it's, our, it's our widest one currently. Um, which is what we call universe or the, the, um, the most general um, impression level. But all of our ratings um, have the ability to be viewed by um, demographics. And so I think um, it's important to understand, um, A, where demographic information is coming from, but also the value of it, the value of providing the demographic information. And also, I think it's important to keep in mind that you can be providing multiple types of information when you uh, are talking to a client or you're representing a client. You can provide them multiple uh, pieces of data. So you could provide them 18 plus um, impression information. You could provide them um, your, uh, you know, adults 25 to 34 with the household income of 100K plus information alongside that as further insight. So um, sometimes I feel like when I talk to people, they, they, they don't want to put themselves in a box by saying, this is the only demographic story. Uh, this is the only story about the, 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 the inventory. Um, really, we'd just like to encourage everybody to, to, to go in and, and, and look at the demographics of uh, different types of inventory um, and um, encourage you to, to tell those, those stories about a home value um, with demographics being just obviously a piece of the rating system, but a very valuable piece, um, ultimately, and being able to describe the audience um, that you are, um, that we are providing as an industry. Um, so that's just the, the basics. Once again, this is just a 101, just the basics of, of, of the, uh, the demographic information um, in the rating system. Um, please let me know if you have any questions here. I'm going to open up the questions panel and click forward so that you guys can also feel free to um, ask me any questions via email. Um, also, please uh, reach out to us and, and, and follow us on uh, uh, Twitter at Geopath um, OOH. Our uh, rebrand is um, fast approaching. At September 19th, we will officially become Geopath. You can see Geopath everywhere here, obviously. Um, so we invite you to uh, reach out to us, get involved, um, and follow us on all of our, our social media channels as well. Um, let me double check our questions here. Okay. Um, so why can a location have the same market composition on the same street within a block of another? Um, so this is a question specifically about uh, market composition. Um, again, the definition of, for, for everyone who, who doesn't know, um, the market composition uh, is defined as the percentage of a, um, of a panel or a group of panels impressions. Um, for the most part, it's, it's delivered per panel but a percentage of, the, of a panel's impressions that are coming from a defined demographic. Um, so the question here is that how do we account for differences on, on small, uh, within small geographic uh, disparities? So 
Um, the answer to that would be, it would depend on the locations involved. There are many, many examples, though, of this happening. It's especially prevalent when you're talking about panels that are um, either, if it's on the same street, which is what this question is about, it's on the same street. So obviously these things happen all the time when you're talking about a local access street and a block over, it's a highway. Those are a block apart. We're talking about completely different audiences because you have uh, you know, a high reach highway or interstate that are bringing people um, to and from different areas of the market. The, that local access road may be primarily used by people that, that live or work within that neighborhood. That, that, that one's pretty obvious. Um, but there are cases of, of sometimes where on the same street, within a block or two, you'll have very different impression levels, you'll have very different uh, demographic breakdowns. And most of the time it has to do with a, uh, a one of these high reach access roads merging into that. If this, if this is a road where uh, you'll have uh, an interstate getting off on that road, the, uh, the traffic going off of that road in a particular direction, maybe towards a, a more heavily populated or used part of portion of the market, um, um, going off in that direction will have different demographics. Um, if there is a case where, um, if there is a case where basically it's a highway or something like that, and there's a and there's a radical difference in the demographics. That is most likely a system error. Those are very rare. I don't think I've ever had one of those happen. But if you if you ever feel like there's this case of like, no, I can't I can't figure out how the audience literally the cars would be able to get from you know uh, from anywhere else to get on the road to change the demographic breakdown of this, then please um, contact us and we will we will look into that problem immediately. Like I said, that is very rare. Um, I, in, in terms of actual demographics and things like that, I don't think that's, I've ever heard of a case of that happening, but, but please contact us if, if that is the case. Um, we also have a, um, uh, a question about um, uh, mobile data and, um, and, uh, and, and using that for demographics. Operation Moore, um, which is currently in uh, the process of, 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 of being developed, is, in, is uh, incorporating a lot of exciting new data sources that allow us to have real-time information um, about people uh, and, and or aggregate information about people uh, passing in, in different parts of the market and along specific roads and things like that. So there is more information um, coming in turn, which will dramatically affect not just demographics and demographic information, but also what types of demographic information, and, and obviously not just that, also many other different types of insights about the out-of-home audience. That, all of that information um, will be coming with Operation War. Please stay tuned with that. That's, a, this, that's in a very exciting development phase right now, um, but there is a, a lot of great information um, and insights that are coming with Operation War. So with that, I don't have any other questions. Um, so uh, feel, uh, please feel free um, to email me if you had any, if you have any questions that come to you, or if you feel like you have any um, issues with any of the information that you're seeing in the system. Um, and please um, join us um, next week um, for Out of Home Office Hours, where we'll, we will be talking about um, ratings 2.0 and some of the information that was incorporated into. Um, the rating system relatively recently, actually, in order to um, properly account for um, digital uh, this information that was that was incorporated specifically. I'm talking about speed and congestion information, um, um, also affected static inventory. But we'll talk more about that next week. So please join me, um, and thank you so much for joining me today on Out of Home Office Hours. Have a great day.